Some more examples of young men who simply need a silver suppository. No, there are exceptions. Come on. Okay, so originally I was going to make a video this week about action and the Kingsman franchise. After starting the script, I realized it was a rather large undertaking and that I need a lot more time in order to do it properly. Also, I watched The Golden Circle, and I got super bummed out about it because I kind of forgot about how much I disliked it, and it just reminded me about everything I kind of hate with the Kingsman and action franchises out there. So yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more time in order to make that video, but for now, here's something a little more spooky and Spooktober related. Also, yes, I know Spooktober is done, and this is probably going to be up on either Halloween or November 1st, but it's really close, and that's kind of the best I could do. I spent the last weekend in uh, Vancouver to go see Brockhampton, so that's kind of what you got to deal with at this point. Sorry. Also, going forward, this is going to be a no-spoiler review. Uh, the movie I'm talking about today came out very, very recently, and I don't want to take anything away from it in case you were planning on seeing it. Art is really interesting to me as it is something that I think everyone enjoys in some capacity. This isn't to say that everyone likes what we could call traditional art, but they might enjoy other forms of art such as photography, plays, or even this little thing you might have heard of called film. You can really trust my opinion on this since I've taken one art history class and two, count them, two film studies classes since I've been at university. Although films on their own can be considered their own form of art, there exists a very interesting intersection within film with the genre known as art or art house films. This doesn't mean that only art films are considered art by modern standards, but it does mean that they are going for a more artful or kind of different take on what films should be or presented as to a viewer. When thinking about art films and how they're typically portrayed in media, they're often depicted as very weird, uh, odd, kind of experimental films, usually in black or white, and they have just a lot of weird imagery to them. My go-to example of what I think most art films from the outside perspective is, is from the movie The Ring. For those of you who don't know, in the movie, there's a videotape that has a lot of very weird and disturbing imagery on it. The imagery is in black and white, and I think this can be pretty spot on for what most art films can be like. This doesn't necessarily mean that all art films have to be in black and white or use disturbing or weird imagery, but I think when most people hear the term art film, they usually think of something along these lines. Most art films are trying to depict, well, art. To depict art, these films are often trying to convey themes and messages through abstract symbolic imagery. Imagery is a very fundamental concept when it comes to art. When people think of the term art, they're often going to be thinking of a painting or an image that they may have seen before, such as the starry night. The concept of imagery being really fundamental to art is something that I think is very important when you're thinking about what an art film is. Often, art films are trying to portray a lot of symbolism when a majority of the shots and scenes that we as viewers are seeing, much like a painting, except over the course of typically two hours. Okay, so you're probably thinking right now, that's really cool, Zach, but what does this have to do with Spooktober? Well, buckle up, dude. We're about to talk about something pretty spooky. So recently, I saw a film called The Lighthouse, which was honestly just amazing. In my opinion, it's one of the best films of the year, and it impacted me much in the same way as Hereditary and Midsummer. Why I bring this film up is because, surprise, it's an art horror film. I bet you didn't see that coming now, did you? So yeah, it's an art horror film. I also wanted to bring it up though because it really encompasses the idea of what an art film is and kind of demonstrates what that whole concept is about. Like I discussed in my Hereditary video, this film focuses on a more non-traditional approach, which I think can be heavily tied to the art horror genre. I would consider this a more experimental art horror when contrasting it with Hereditary, as it has a lot of different beats within, as well as dealing with human emotions with abstract imagery. What's really important to focus on here is the use of abstract imagery. That's something that I think is very common within the art horror genre, but it isn't exclusively tied to it. You don't need to use it in order to be considered more of an art horror, but I think it's very typical of the genre, if that makes sense. The Lighthouse is driven by the idea of loneliness and seeking human comfort in isolation. Viewers are meant to feel as claustrophobic as the characters, as they are isolated from essentially the rest of the world with the tiny island they are on. Now this on its own may not seem very scary, but it is uncomfortable to watch. 
Why I discussed art films earlier is because this film approaches every shot in a very artistic way. Each scene on its own is rather beautiful to look at, especially with the black and white photography. It's almost hauntingly beautiful at times, and some of the shots are very scary as a result of that use of black and white. Beneath these shots, there's a lot of symbolism and meaning packed away, which is very similar to what a lot of paintings do. Viewers are often kept wondering what the purpose and meaning behind characters, objects, and even animals are throughout the entirety of the film. This adds a layer of intrigue that kept me wanting to watch it. As the film progresses, the isolation the main characters Thomas and Ephraim face begins to take a toll on them, and it affects their perception of reality. They quickly begin to lose their sense of time, questioning how long they've actually been on the island and if what they're seeing is even real. I personally felt while watching this that I was in a similar boat of confusion. Art films have so much to analyze and dissect, and The Lighthouse is very much the same. But when using the idea of questioning what is real or not, it allows for this idea to run wild. Maybe some scenes are meant to have symbolism, but maybe they are not, and the viewers are supposed to question what is actually important. Viewers are put into a very similar position as the characters in the film, questioning the reality around us and what we are being presented as if it is real or not and having to di make that distinction ourselves. I think it's fair to say that Ephraim is meant to be the narrator or perspective we follow in the film, but as it progresses, he's portrayed as being less reliable. I think this is one of the many shining aspects of this film, and what better categorizes it as an art horror. It uses an abundance of symbolism in order to portray feelings to the viewers. But because some of the symbolism is so abstract, we are meant to question the very reality they are living in. Overall, I feel like The Lighthouse is such an amazing film. From the powerhouse performances to the haunting imagery, as well as the incredible technical work in order to bring everything together, it is a complete experience. The only unfortunate thing about this film is that it may be too artistic or niche for the general public. I think there's going to be a lot of people who will watch this film and be really amazed with the aspects I just mentioned, but due to its more artistic nature, it might fall flat with a lot of the viewers, and that's kind of the pitfall of art films in general. The amazing thing about art films is that this is kind of okay. They're often made with this expectation, and while they're not hoping that only like three people come to see the film, they know that they're only going after a very niche audience. Within this niche audience, when the concept of the art film hits, it really hits hard for those people, and that's who the filmmakers are making it for. When it doesn't hit, I think it often leads to the tropes that I mentioned earlier within the genre. Often they come across as experimental or weird, or just a lot of odd black and white imagery, and I think this is okay. Like I've said before, everyone is entitled to their own opinion and their own taste, especially when it comes to films and art, but you're wrong. The Lighthouse is what art films are to me, and I think it's something everyone should check out regardless, just to see how impactful its symbolism can be, and symbolism especially in film can be. Thanks for watching my video and my thoughts on the Lighthouse and Art House films in general. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed any of this. If you didn't, you don't have to. I'm not gonna make you. But yeah, thanks for sticking around and listening to my ramblings about these two topics.